Okay, Chris, part two. Um, BV Mark, 1977. Um, he wants to know, he says, liquidity on dogs improving rapidly, the majority of it coming late through Harlow, through Harlow up 30% on Betfair, and majority of other tracks seeing the same figures. Uh, where do you think, where do you think this extra money is coming from? Yes, yeah, so the the dogs on Betfair is interesting. That that has is has not declined. So horse racing is, I think, when I last checked, was doing about the UK win market was about seven million a day. Whereas dogs, obviously, there are more dog races. That's about two and a half million a day, and that's always the dogs have been sort of flat at two and a half million a day for years. Whereas the horse racing has declined from, I think, about eighteen million a day to to seven and a half. In terms of like where the money's coming from, I, I've got no idea, but I, I would have thought, I, I think there are some computer modelers that are, are doing dogs and and are getting more and more involved in it. And yeah, secondly, I think the, the with affordability checks and volatility, the dog racing, because people bet less, is actually sort of more, more appealing because you bet less more often on dog racing it you don't need to deposit as much money in into betfair in order to sort of play those markets so i think that's probably one of the reasons why it's held up and horse racing has declined so much in terms of highlight high, 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 i really no idea why that would the, what the late money there would actually mean it's not something i know too much about okay now this next question would probably be more about up your street uh, at our hills is god has has Chris explored using any generative AI software to find winners' stroke value? Um, yeah, so generative AI, like chat GPT, that sort of thing, where you can then um, ask a question and it will give you a reply. I haven't used it in terms of directly building a model and giving it data and saying, tell me what the value is. But I do use that sort of software to help program. So if I've got an idea of what I want want to be programmed, rather than sitting there and writing it all myself, I will give the instructions to ChatGPT and it will write the Python script as I, I want. And obviously, there are a few mistakes. You have to correct it. But at the moment, that sort of technology is more use it as a tool. I would never rely on it for the, for the answers it, it gives. Um, in terms of sort of the AI I use, I do my own algorithms. I adapt what people have had. So um, for my trading algorithm, it was adapted from one that Google used about 10 years ago to to learn how to beat Atari arcade games. So I sort of adapt those, those sort of AI algorithms rather than, yeah, I wouldn't rely on generative AI at this point, but who knows in the future whether it, it, it could be something that would work. Just me chipping in there. Is that a, a sort of say what's going to, is he meaning what's going to win the 330 and then the, the AI going through all the form and coming up with the winner? Is that the, is that the ultimate plan? That would be, I guess, what, what he's suggesting there is you would put, you would give the computer, I mean, I think, so ChatGPT now can search the web. Um, but it, it really, you'd want to give it the data and say, this is what, but it, it, it would be too much data to, to give to that software at this point in time. But in the future, yeah, that's, that's what it would mean. It would mean, here is all the data. Look at this. Tell me what's value and see what, see what it comes back with. Um, who knows? In 10 years, that, that could, it could come up with something pretty good. Okay, right. Hawkwell Dorset is a professional gambler. I don't know where he's got this from, but you may, you may. Is it true that Chris would ban each way betting? And if so, why? Yeah, so I think that's a response to a tweet I put out months ago asking about each way betting. It was a bit of sort of research, really. Um, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ban it. I mean, I believe in a free market. If bookmakers want to offer it, that's fine. But what I would say is that it... The way it works is is archaic. 
the way it's like the, the place calculation is done, sort of like a quarter of the odds, a fifth of the odds. And it's totally arbitrary. And if you look on Betfair or Matchbook or the exchange, and you look at the odds on the place market compared to what the odds are calculated from the um from just sort of dividing the win price with the bookies by four or by three or whatever, or five, sorry, um, you'll see that they're completely inaccurate. And obviously that's exploitable. It's it's um, you know, often the books will be either say an odds on favourite or the books themselves have decided to like offer extra places. There'll be a book that's say three places and you know they could it could be a 270 percent book on the or 260 on the on the place market so the reason why i wouldn't ban it but i just think the bookmakers are offering something where up to 30 40 percent of the horses during the day in the morning are value on on the on the each way market and they must know that so it leads to accounts being closed it leads to because because there's a huge loophole there. they're literally giving a positive expected value bet and what we're actually doing on on sharp betting in a in in the coming days is putting out this a live list of what all these horses are just to show people that that there's huge value in the trade market at some points and huge not value at some points so you might the place market might be minus 40 percent ev or it might be plus 20 percent and i just think it's it's not it's not a very modern way to offer a market where the bookmaker knows that they're offering something that is it is exploitable. It, it, I don't I don't really understand it, but I do. I think when I put the tweet out, my the answer I got, which I understand, is people want to bet each way. The customers want to bet that. So if that's what the customer wants, that will sort what they'll do. And but there is one bookmaker that offers, say, up to five or six places. You know, an extra place. On a regular basis, but what it does mean is the the wind market is like 150 percent book. So where everyone else is offering say 10 to one, they're offering seven to one in the wind market to cover themselves for each way. And again, I think that anyone who wants to bet to win is getting a huge disadvantage because the bookmakers are accounting for each way. So that I guess was the point I was making is it's not an efficient way of pricing the market, and it it leads to problems and account closures and things that are, are not necessary, I don't think. Okay. Uh, at BKW1491, in your experience, what is the number one mistake people make when attempting to apply machine learning stroke AI to sports betting? Um, the number one mistake you'd make would be, well, I've made lots of times is when you put something into the model that you don't you wouldn't know at the time before before a race or before a sports event so you might put into the inputs into a model the result or the end of year um win percent that the jockey had or something like that um, and obviously that's gonna that's information you don't have to feed into the model so you're going to get this result your model's going to say, wow, you're making like a ROI of 50%. You're like, this is great. But what you've actually done is fed into the model the result. <laughs> so it, it's predicting from information that you wouldn't have and you're getting this great result, whereas in reality you wouldn't be able to do that because you wouldn't know that this jockey or trainer had a had, had a great year. Um, so that's a, a common mistake. Another mistake would be simply not having enough data and in and instead of what you need is a model that can generalize over a lot of data rather than something that learns specifically that i don't know maiden runners by this trainer at this track you'd make this amount of money if they win you know on, on betting on them blind that sort of thing so you need you need a large data set to be able to generalize rather than a small data set that it's never gonna gonna work and when you go out of sample and actually start betting. So those would be the the two main problems um that you'd encounter if you're trying to model sports or racing. Okay, I'm not quite sure to pronounce this word. At Tish Sports, uh hi Chris. 
if you're betting with a sports book on a market that isn't on an exchange, if possible, how would you go about cal- calculating CLV banks? Can you translate that for me, please, before you answer it? What What's CLV? Okay, so that's closing line value. Um, CLV is closing line value. So what that would be is if you backed a horse at eight to one and the bet for SP was two to one, you'd say that you've got a huge closing line value. It's 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 because you're assuming that the final price, the closing line, is an efficient price. Therefore, if you beat that, you've you've got a good system. So people would use that to measure through volatility. If you're having a bad run, you'd say, well, I'm still beating the price. Therefore, um, I think I'm onto something here, so I'll carry on doing it. If they were all, if you're always, um, you know, if you're backing them at eight to one and their bet for SP is twelve to one, you'd be like, this isn't this isn't really working. And um, for me, I don't I don't measure against that. So all my models have been built um, against bet for SP or against the pinnacle closing line or bookmakers' final price. So I'm trying to beat the final price. And um, so things can drift or come in after I bet. And because I tend to do like loads and loads of bets, um, I don't. I don't move the market, it doesn't move the market. So there's loads and loads of small bets. And um, so it's not something that I I worry about because I do enough bets. I I measure on profitability. Is it is it making money or losing money? If it's losing money, I'll stop doing it over a thousand bets or something. And I think that that to me is a better way of doing it, especially if you're doing small markets. I think as the the, the question said, what do you do if there is no pinnacle market or no betfair market? You know, some of these small football games, there might be a few hundred pounds bet on, in the world. So they're not, no one really has an accurate price. So, so that, you know, I, I just judge it against, is, is this system or this algorithm that I built, is that making money over a thousand bets? Then, you know, I'd keep going with it. So, yeah, I don't really look at the closing line.